I think what makes me who I am is the years and years of, of, of hard knocks on the road, touring. You know, one day you'd be in an arena with a, with a big giant artist and, and, and another tour, you know, uh, you'd be doing like club tours, things like that. Having to get the best sound you can from all different gears, some not so good, some great. I think all of that, through years and years of doing that, I toured with Tower of Power for years. I did one of their records. I, I, I did a D, their 40th anniversary DVD. And Tower of Power would, in some places, they'd play arenas. Other places, they'd do clubs. It's just depending all over the world. And we didn't carry our own sound gear. You used what's there. And when you have to use what's there, you get really good at making anything work. My fear is usually things that are beyond my control. I can only sit at that desk and, and we're live to 10 million people. I have a great, great team of guys that, that work with us. To, but if that stuff doesn't get plugged in in time, and if the musicians, it's all one, you know, it's 300 people all doing what they're supposed to do at one time. And there's so much of it that's out of, out of my control. So if you don't hear a microphone or somebody's singing and you don't hear them at all, is it me? Is it the mic? Is it not plugged in? I mean, there's all these things that are beyond your control. And all you can do is go, well, ah, I'm, I'm here and I don't have any control over that. So, but you know, that, 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 that hasn't, that doesn't happen very often. I mean, these shows, it can't happen. We go, we, we really spend a great deal of time with backups and, and backup plans and, and, and technically making sure that things are, are as solid and as strong as they possibly can be. So in regards to uh, equipment that I use, that I, that I love, um, great, great live mix starts with uh, great microphones. And in my opinion, um, the Sennheiser microphones that I use on drums, etc., cetera, are, are the best in the world. I'm a 602 fan. I love that microphone. I feel like every great mix starts with the kick drum. If you don't have a great kick, it's not going to be right unless that kick drum is right. And for me, a 602 inside the drum, two or three inches off of the beater, two or three inches off of the front head in the right spot is, is the perfect starting point for a great kick sound. Then I use a H comp and an API EQ to get the sound that I like for a kick drum. But obviously the kick sound, depending on the genre of the music, changes a little bit, but that is the foundation. The kick, the drums, and then laying that bass right on top to where the kick is driving that bass. That's the foundation. Vocal mics, again, I I I haven't I haven't found a mic yet that can that can compete with a 5235. That's my favorite RF mic. I've used it on literally, I want to say thousands of, at least hundreds and hundreds of contestants, different singers, different artists. Um, through 15 seasons of Voice, 14 seasons of Idol, uh, Showtime at the Apollo, Audience Music, MTV Music Awards, all these different shows. I mean, 5235 works on everybody. And there's a lot of times where people will say, well, we, we always use this. And sometimes I'm able to talk them out of, out of it. Uh, for example, Kelly Clarkson has a, a, her own 58 that she uses. It's gold and she likes it. But on my shows, when she comes on The Voice, her own managers have said, use what you want to use, Randy. And I, and I put a 5235 on her. And she sounds amazing on it. it and, and, and they allow me to do that because the end product is it sounds amazing. They don't care what mic she has as long as it sounds amazing. I've been through all the capsules that, that are out there, and I don't think anything competes with it. And 935 hard lines on, on BGs, or if I have to use a hard line mic, I used a Chrome 935 on Elton John that sounded insane. He sounded amazing. I, I can't get that. I mean, you can make, I can make a 58 sound good, but that's the point. I got to make it sound good. <laughs> I got to, I got to take away this and add this. And, uh, if I just start with, I mean, isn't that always the key? If, if we go back to recording techniques, we go back to the studio. How do you get your sound? But with the microphones, the, the right mic in the right place. You don't, you're not EQing it in the studio. You're not. 
it's not about that. You don't, you don't get a sound and say, oh, well, we'll EQ it. No, it's the wrong mic or it's in the wrong place. We don't have that luxury in, when we're live. There's so much sound, there's so much volume on stage, there's so much bleed into each other that you're doing corrective mixing. And so it's even more important that you have mics in a live world that sound good to begin with because everything you do is corrective. In the studio, you're getting great mics, Neumanns, um, and you're putting them in the right place, and you're getting great sounds. Then you go to mix, you're enhancing those sounds. You're, you're, you're making it a little better than what you've actually recorded. Live, everything is marked like this, right? I mean, everything has to be, otherwise you're picking up the whole stage. It's really important to me to, to have the right microphone. I use 906s on guitars, uh, 905, I don't understand where, why that's uh, not being made anymore. Um, it's uh, one of the best snare mics in the world. I have several of them, so that's what we use. <laughs> I've got uh, a complement of Sennheisers that we use for drums, 914s, 905s on the snares, 604s on the tom, 602 on the kick. I, I haven't found anything that'll beat it. I have to use uh, other people's mics when, when that's what they bring in and that's what they're this is what we're toying with this is what we're endorsed by this is what we have to use okay i'll use it i'll make it work we'll make it sound good but that's what we have to do we have to make it work and we have to make it sound good we have to do more eq we have to do more work to get them to sound good you have to know what you want something to sound like and that's what makes a great mix a sound is going to come out you put a mic on something you gain it up and you open it up Okay, well, what do you do with that? Well, you have to know what you want it to sound like in order to know what to do with it. And I find that if I make it sound pleasurable to me, if I like the sound of it, other people do too. That's what's worked for me, is making it sound good for me. If I start mixing for you, a sound that I hate, you might love. The sound that you think is great, I might think, oh, I don't like that sound. So it's, it's very, uh, what do you call it? It's relative. Relative to, to, yeah, it's very relative. And it's a matter of, a, you know, everyone's got an opinion about sound. We always said, everybody knows their job in audio. <laughs> Make something sound the way you love it or you think it sounds great. And then keep learning. Because obviously when we're, when we're doing live sound, it is live or... You know, it's not, you're not getting the, the greatest mics in the greatest settings like you would in the studio. So it is a lot of corrective EQing and it takes a lot to make everything sound clear and not mush together. And so you learn, you learn from other people. You hear something and as you go and you say, wow, what are you doing to that kick? Drum? What are you doing to that vocal? What did you do to those horns? Because they sound amazing. And, and you start applying those things for yourself and, and what works for you because you can have these knobs in a lot of different places and get the same sound. I can tell you what to do with something. It doesn't mean it's going to come out that way for you. It comes out that way for me because that's how I do it. And I do it for me. I mix for me. I mix things the way I think they sound great. And then I look to the artist and say, what do you think? And that's when they say, wow, that's amazing or that's great but could we have a little more guitar? Absolutely, that's when you know, okay, we're going down the right path here. The, the artist loves it, they love what they're hearing. More guitar, sure, more guitar, yeah, that. And yeah, and maybe maybe the backgrounds are a little little too hot. Okay, you pull those back a little bit. And so now you can, you're, but you've established that field, you've established that place where it's a good place because they like what you've done. But if you try, there's no way to try to sit and dial the things in wondering what, like, for example, Blake Shelton thinks. He sits right next to me when I do some of his mixes. And I don't think about him. I think about what do I like? What do I want this to sound like? And I put it up. I do I do what I do. And then I look at him. What do you think? And you know, that's great. Okay. Well, it's great because nine times out of ten, it's great. I love it. You're going to love it. And you, like I said, you might eh, guitar up, guitar down, shake her up, shake her down. It's, it's, that's the easy stuff. Make yourself happy. I mean, if, if you're cooking something and you're tasting it and you're not, really, you're not really sure if you like it, 
how can you expect someone else to like it? How can you put dish that up and say, what do you think of this? Well, it's okay. When you think, eh, it's okay, you, and you can't, you're hoping they love it, but you can't really expect them to love it if you don't. If you love it and you're confident, this, this soup is amazing, or this dish is amazing. If they don't like it, okay, so be it. But most people are gonna love it if you love it. That's what makes a good chef. I think that's what makes a good mixer. If you love what you're doing and you think it sounds amazing, other people will too. So do that. And if you're not getting the sound you want, don't, don't just keep saying, well, that's the best it's gonna be. No, keep searching, asking other engineers, hearing other things to say, well, how did you get that sound? How did you keep searching for a way to make that bass better, those horns better, the keys better, the drums better, whatever that is, so that you love mixing. There's two ways to mix live. You're either chasing problems or you're ahead of the game. And what I mean by that is you, you, you get individual sounds, uh, the band sounds checks, the show starts, but maybe the guitar player is real loud and the keyboard player is softer now and the, and the singer's not putting out as much and, and there's things going on. So you're, you're, you're chasing, oh gosh, the, I gotta get the bass, oh no, and the guitar's, oh gosh, that keyboard just came. So you're going through a song and you're chasing, you're behind the mix. It's what I call chasing a mix. Instead of it coming out of the hole and, go, and it just sounds amazing. You're like, oh yeah. And now you're ahead. You're thinking, okay, here comes this section where I'm gonna push the keys a little bit because that gives it more feeling. And then there's a guitar solo coming up. Boom, you hit that guitar solo, it goes right back into place. There's a delay coming up in his vocal. Boom, you push that delay. Yeah, it sounds amazing. That's being ahead of a mix. And, and that's, that's fun mixing. That's great mixing, as opposed to being at a festival where you didn't get a sound check. You've only got the first song, you got to put it together. Well, you got to get it together within that first song because the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth song should all sound great. If you're chasing a mix through the whole show, that's not fun mixing. It doesn't sound great, and it's, it's, it's not good. It's really imperative and important for young engineers to listen to music and to listen to the mixes, not the music, not the words, not the lyrics. Listen to the mixes, listen to the balance. And, and what are the things that, that excite you? There are songs that I think are, are amazing, not because of the lyrics or because of the playing, but because of the sound of it, because of the way it, it, it sounds from the bottom to the top. The bottom is deep and rich and the top is crisp and clear. And, and those things that, 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 that you love about mixing that's what you want to try to recreate. Those are the memories in your head of those particular, like a kick drum on a certain album. You know, so, okay, that's what you're looking for. So you know what you're looking for. That's what you have to know is what it is you want in the, in the end and, and, and the best way to get there. Because in the long run, it doesn't matter how you get there. You can use a hundred different compressors or any kind of console and even different microphones, but you've got to know what you want. So for me, if I don't have a 602, if I don't have a, a great um, uh, drum to begin with, great sounding drum, if I got to put a, a B-52 in it, then that's what I got to put in it. If I have to put a 57 in it, I got to put a 57 in it. But I know what I'm trying to accomplish. So I know I might dig for a lot of low 50 cycles. I might have to take out a lot of 160, that low mid that's going to be a problem. I may have to add the attack at 6.3K 6 and some 10K. To, to, to get the attack that I want. You might have to compress it hard with the DBX-160X or whatever kind of compressor you have, but you know you've got to compress it. You know what you're looking for in the bottom. You know that the, the low mid of it will ruin the entire mix if it isn't taken out. And so you do whatever you have to do at whatever frequencies, but you know what you're listening for. So you sweep around, you go, yeah, that's it, that's it, or it's close or I'm not going to get it to sound like a 602, but I can get it awfully close because I know what I'm trying, what I'm listening for. I'm not just putting it out, I'm going, well, it doesn't sound great, but I'm not sure what we should do with it. You do know what to do with it if you know what you're listening for, because you play with it until you find what you like. I don't know anything other than sound. This, yeah. this is all I know, it's all I've ever been in love with. If, if this were all fall apart, I, I have no idea where I'd work tomorrow. I, I don't know how to do anything other than this. Yeah, so this is what I do. It's, it's in my blood, it's in my heart, it's in my soul.